so we're starting the uh, second majlis or the second sitting of this Dhamma, inshallah. And we stopped at the third asal. The first asal was what? The first foundation was what? Al-ilm. The second, acting upon that knowledge. Here the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, al-asl al-thalith, ad-da'watu ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala basira. Calling to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third foundation is from the foundations of ad-da'wa salafiyya is calling to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon insight, upon knowledge. The Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, <coughs> Inna, Ida manna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ida manna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala al-Muslimi bil-ilmi wal-amali, fa'alayhan yubadir ila al-isali hadha al-khayri ila al-nasi an tariqi da'watihim wa nusihim wa yushadihim, fa'inna hadha huwa al-amalu al-anbiya, fa'inna hadha huwa al-amalu al-anbiya. عليهم السلام يقول الله تعالى عن نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني والله سبحانه وتعالى رفع منزلة الداعي إليه على غيره فقال تعالى ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين The Sheikh says رحمه الله If Allah سبحانه وتعالى blesses you with knowledge If Allah جل وعلا blesses a Muslim with knowledge and then blesses the Muslim with acting upon or giving them the tawfiq to act upon what they have learnt, then upon him is to hasten towards teaching the people, making sure that that khayr, that goodness that you now have, that you, it reaches others by calling them, by advising them and guiding them. Because that is the role of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said about his prophet, Commanded him, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Say, O oh Muhammad, this is my path. And what am I doing on my path? أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ I call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon مَادَ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ I call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon guidance, guidance and upon knowledge and insight. Like in not only the Prophet, أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي And anyone who follows and everyone who follows, the sunnah of the, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he says, Allah, uh, the Shaykh says, rahimahullah, that Allah jalla wa raised <coughs> the status of the da'i, the one that is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah says, who is better in speech? Who is better in speech than the one that is calling to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And not only that, wa'amila salihan, and he does righteous deeds. Not only does he have knowledge, not only does he do righteous deeds, like he calls others to that knowledge that Allah has given him. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he says that I am from the Muslimin. Then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله, أَمَّا عَنْ ثَوَابِهِ وَأَجْرِهِ فَهُوَ عَظِيمٌ لِعِذَمِ عَمَلِهِ فَإِنَّ الدَّاعِيَةَ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِ مَنْ تَبِعَهُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ أَوْ فِي الْخَيْرِ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ يَنْقُسَ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْئًا وقد جاء في حديث علي رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لأن يهدي, لا يهدي الله بك رجلا واحدا خير لك من حمر النعم Then the Sheikh says رحمه الله That as for the reward of the person that calls to the way of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Then his reward is immense And it is great Because <coughs> Why is it great? Because the one that is calling to Allah سبحانه وتعالى He will be given the reward of the action of the person that he calls so for example, if you teach a person how to pray the salah correctly, for every time that they pray the salah correctly, you will be rewarded. Let's say you teach a 20-year-old how to pray. And they end up praying exactly how you tell them to pray, which is the correct way. And that they die at the age of 80. How many years have they prayed with that salah that you have taught them? 60 years. You will be rewarded for those 60 years without his reward being decreased. That, can, that is the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may have died years back, years ago. Lacking they are being guided by the knowledge that you have taught them. 
How many times do we hear Qala Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah Qala Imam, Imam Muslim Qala Imam Ahmed So on and so forth How many times? We say it so often We mention them more than we mention our parents Because that is the benefit of calling people to Islam The masjid that this The masjid that Or the imam that this masjid is named after Imam Nawawi rahimahullah He died about 800 years ago If not more he died about 800 years ago, roughly. Like in here, we have a masjid under his name. And every time we say, time we say no, we say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Look at the 40 hadith, Arba'un al nawawiyya and Riyadh al-Salihin. There is not a Muslim house, and there is not a masjid, except that you will find these two books in the, in the masjid. And that is from the benefits of calling people to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, said to Ali radiallahu anhu in a hadith that we're going to study in Kitab al-Tawheed inshallah in the fifth chapter. This hadith we're going to study. So he says to Ali radiallahu anhu in, on the day of Khaybar when he was sending him to call the people to Islam, he said verily if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides one man, one person to Islam, then that is better for you than the, the Anything that wealth can buy What is known as camels is what was known back then Like it is better than the dunya and everything that is in it Because you will be rewarded immensely Not only have you called to the way of Allah But you've encouraged that person to worship Allah You've taught them how to worship Allah They've worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala With that knowledge that you have taught them Then the shaykh says Rahimahullah Wa mimma yanbaghi an yu'lam huna أنه لا يشتغل لمن يكون داع لمن يكون داعيا إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى أن أن يلم بجميع الأحكام الشرعية ولكن الواجب عليه أن يكون عالما بما يدعو إليه أي القضية التي يبلغها يبلغها إلى الناس يجب عليه أن يكون عالما بها العلم الشرعي ولذلك يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ عن بلغ عني ولو آية الشيخ says and here there's a very important thing that you need to know which is that it is not a condition for a person to call to the way of Allah that he has a whole understanding, wholesome understanding of the whole sharia. It is not to say that you can only call to the way of Allah unless you are a alim. So no one is saying unless you get to the status of Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymin, Al-Albani and Fawzan, then don't call to the way of Allah. That is not what is being said. And that is not what is being meant when the scholars say that you call to Allah upon knowledge. Like it just means, or it means that that thing that you are calling to, that you must have knowledge of it. That thing, or that ibadah that you are calling to, or that advice that you are calling to, or that thing that you are prohibiting this person from doing when you're enjoying the good and forbidding the evil, you must have knowledge of it. As long as you have knowledge of it, then that is enough. For example, you know that, مثلاً, Intoxicants are haram And you know a person Who is using that <coughs> When you go to them And you tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the Prophet made this haram And it is impermissible for you as a Muslim to do so That is a form of da'wah The ways that a person can do da'wah are vast It is not just sitting in the, on the mimbag Or standing on the mimbag Or, uh, or uh, teaching a lesson La. According to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Can be you walk into the masjid with someone, for example, for Salat al fajr and they start to pray the Sunnah Salah instead of the Fagad with the Imam. And that is not permissible. So if a person walks into the masjid and the Imam's in the Fajr prayer, the Fagad, and someone walks into the masjid and they pray Sunnah, that's not permissible because the Prophet ﷺ said if the Karma is called, there's no Salah except the one that is being prayed, the main one. So when you go to this person, you tell them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this. And then they listen or they don't listen. You are a da'i in that position. You are a nasih, a person who is advising. That is what da'wah is. If you've studied a book, مثلا, you've studied usul al-thalatha. And you've understood all of the things that are mentioned in it. There is no harm in you picking up and teaching it to the youth. There is no harm in you picking it up and teaching it to your family members. And if you do teach it to your family members, then inshallah for that for them rectifying their aqidah and their tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their tawheed, then you will get the reward for that. Then the Shaykh says the verse of the hadith of the Prophet, Balli anni walaw ayah, 
then make sure that you pass the message even if it is one ayah from the hadith of the Prophet or verse. Many groups misunderstand this and they believe it to be that you can give da'wah as long as you, wherever you want, as you want. As long as you just make sure you mention an ayah or hadith or you advise them with something. And that is not the case. The reality is when you learn and you have knowledge of a certain thing, then you call to it. That is, by you calling to it, that is in reality you acting upon your knowledge. By you calling to your, the knowledge that Allah has taught to you, that is you acting upon the knowledge. And the only way that this ummah has carried on throughout the centuries, holding on to, their, holding on to its aqidah, is by righteous people, righteous imams, righteous students of knowledge, passing on that knowledge from generation to generation to generation. Today you're students of knowledge. Tomorrow you're going to be scholars, you're going to be imams of the religion. And you're going to be passing on the message of Islam. And that is the difference between Islam and every other religion. Islam, the followers of Islam, they actually learn Islam. The traditional correct Islam. They learn it and they pass it on through the generations. That's why this religion will remain until Allah Jalla wa'ala, until the end of time. Whereas every other religion goes through transition and development. Like in Islam doesn't know that. But why is that? It's because there are Muslim people that are righteous, that are calling to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Sheikh says, فَإِذَا عَرَفَ الْمُسْلِمُ آيَةً If a Muslim knows the ayah, وَفَهِمَ مَعْنَاهَا عَنْ دَرِيقُ الْعُلَمَاءِ he knows the ayah and he understands it according to how or the correct understanding from the scholars wal mufassirin and those that interpret the Quran. Or he learns a hadith from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or he learns of a ruling of the sharia. Halal, haram, to do this, to do that and so on. Or he learns this ruling by way of reading the books of the scholars. بَلَّغَهُ لِغَيْرِهِ مِنَ النَّاسِ <coughs> He makes sure he passes that knowledge on to other than him. وَلَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ عَالِمًا بِغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ الْحُكُمُ وَلَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ عَالِمًا بِغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ الْحُكُمُ Even though he may not know anything else but that hukum. So he might not know other ahkam, other rulings, like in he passes it on. أو الحديث أو الآية Or he passes that verse on or that hadith on. So and it is not a condition that you have to be a'ani before you can call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if that was the case, then no one would, knowledge would not be widespread. So everyone calls according to their, their ability. Like in the person has to stay in the, roles that, the role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. They have to stay in that role that Allah jalla wa ala has given them. So for example, they are student of knowledge, they can teach. Like in they should not give fatawa on major issues that concern the whole ummah because that will cause this person to now slip by, by answering questions that concern a whole ummah or issues that concern مثلا, a divorce مثلا, a man, a woman, whatever happens in their home divorce and this, is it a divorce or did I not divorce her these are the sorts of issues that students of knowledge should not involve themselves in Rather the ulama, when they asked about personal issues to do with talaq and nikah, they don't answer it. Because you can't answer personal issues. Personal issues are meant for the mahkamah, for the court of Islam. Where the judge, the qadi, he judges, he looks <coughs> at evidence, this evidence, that evidence, and then he comes to a conclusion. Lakin, you're only going to hear it from one side. And if you hear it from one side, it's not permissible for you to give a ruling. So it's not permissible for us to delve into Like in issues of tawheed Issues of salah, zakah, fasting If you know the ruling then alhamdulillah Tell the people that ruling And Allah Jalla wa'ala will grant you blessings يقول الشيخ العلامة عبد الرحمن بن قاسم رحمه الله في حاشية على كتاب التوحيد He mentions from this great Sheikh عبد الرحمن بن قاسم رحمه الله In his explanation of كتاب التوحيد he mentions with regards to da'wah, وَلَا بُدَّ لِلْدَعْوَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنْ شَرْدَيْنَ And it is incumbent to have two conditions when calling to the way of Allah Jalla wa'ala. أَن تَكُونَ خَالِسَةٍ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ That it has to be sincerely for Allah's sake. Why is he mentioning this? Because he's already told us that we have to call to the way of Allah, right? 
Now he is telling us how to call to the way of Allah. He's already told us one way of calling to the way of Allah, which is call to the way of Allah in that which you know. The second thing that he's telling us is, yes, call to the way of Allah, but ala ikhlas, upon sincerity. Meaning that you call to the way of Allah to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَن تَكُونَ وِفْقَ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And the way that you're calling, it has to be according to the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. How the Prophet called to the way of Allah, that's how you call to the way of Allah. وَأَن يَكُونَ الدَّاعِ عَارِفٍ بِمَا يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ And the da'i, the caller, has to know what he's calling to. What did the first, what's the first, first thing that he said? Ikhlas. The second... Mutaba'ah. Ikhlas meaning you have to do it for Allah's sake. Secondly, al mutaba'ah, you have to do it according to the way of the Prophet. How the Prophet called to Allah, then you call to Allah. I wish he's going to elaborate on that. Naam. Then the third is that you have to have knowledge of what you're calling to. You have to have knowledge of what you're calling to. So you can't just say, I'm sincere and I'm going to start calling to everyone. No, you have to know that it has to be according to the Sunnah and you have to have knowledge. And this is the problem with some jama'at. Where they go out to a different location, stay there for X amount of days, and they say we're giving da'wah. But they don't have knowledge to give da'wah. And that is haram, because that is taqawwul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're lying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, so the shaykh says, rahimahullah, <coughs> فَإِنْ أَخَلَّ بِالْأَوَّلِ If the first condition is not met, كَانَ مُشْرِكًا And he's a mushrik. He has committed shirk. Because what is the opposite to ikhlas? Shirk. If you're not doing it for Allah's sake, then you're doing it for someone else other than Allah Jalla wa'ala. وَإِنْ أَخَلَّ بِالثَّانِي And if the person doesn't meet the second requirement, كَانَ مُبْتَدِعًا Then he is an innovator. And the second is what? Has to be according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. انتهى كلامه. وَإِنْطِلَاقًا مِنَ الشَّقْدِ الثَّانِي And based upon the second condition, الذي ذكره رحمه الله ذا الشيخ منشن قلنا إن وسائل الدعوة إلى الله توقيفية This is extremely important The Sheikh says وسائل الدعوة The وسائل The ways in which you call to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Are something known as توقيفية توقيفية means you can only derive them from the Quran and the Sunnah So the way that you call to Allah سبحانه وتعالى has to be the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يستحدث فيها شيء لم يكن عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We do not introduce, we cannot introduce something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do. And because of that, ولذلك اشتد النكير السلف على أهل السماع على أهل السماع الذي كان يفعله الصوفية ولو كان هذا السماع مجرد من الآلات المحرمة كآلات الله ونحوها ولو كان هذا السماع نافعا لتليين القلوب لتليين القلوب لأنه لم يأتي به له شاهد في الكتاب ولا في السنة ولا في فعل السلف. The Sheikh says رحمه الله based on that based on what بوسائل دعوة أحسنت وسائل دعوة بتوقيفية meaning the ways that you call to Allah have to be توقيفية they are توقيفية توقيفية means we can only take them from the Quran and the Sunnah. So if, if I say to you, for example, al-ibadah to tawqifiyya, worship is tawqifiyya. What does that mean? I can only derive worship from the Quran and the Sunnah. I cannot now say, subhanAllah, I'm very energetic, energetic these days. I'm going to pray seven times a day. Five times a day is for the normal folks. But me, because I've got my energy is super high and my iman is super high, I'm going to pray seven times a day. You can't say that. That's with ibadah. The shaykh is saying now, with da'wah ilallah, that is also tawqifi. Meaning you can only call to the way of Allah the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called to the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The opposite to tawqif is ijtihadi. It is not ijtihadi. Meaning we can't, everyone cannot come with a way to call to Allah. Listen, I'll call to Allah how I think is fitting, befitting. You call to Allah with whatever way you think is good. Uh, fulan calls to the way of Allah in that which he believes is good. All roads lead to Rome. No, you can't say all roads lead to Rome. You can't say as long as we are calling to Allah, it doesn't matter how we call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is important. So this is why the Sheikh says, rahimahullah, the Salaf, rahimahullah, they would refute those people who would have those dhikr ceremonies, remembrance of Allah ceremonies, where they shout about and they say, hu, 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 oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, Allah. 
these sorts of ceremonies, ceremonies and gatherings, dhikr ceremonies, the Salaf would refute them. The Salaf would say that it was not permissible. Why? Because it is not a way of da'wah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions did. It is not something that they did. And the qa'ida in that, or the principle is, لَوْ كَانَ خَيْغًا لَسَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ Write that down and we shall see it in the eighth one, inshallah, or the ninth principle. لَوْ كَانَ خَيْغًا لَسَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ this is a qa'ida that all the Muslims, but every Muslim must believe in. لو كان خيرا, if there was any goodness in this act, لسبقونا إليه. They would have preceded us in it. Who am I referring to? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Sahaba and the Salaf al-Salih. There's not a single thing that there was that was beneficial to us except that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us. طيب. Then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah. So, for, so far we've got what? Wasailu da'wati tawqifiya. They are tawqifiya, meaning we can only call to the way of Allah the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he'll mention, and if, uh, there's no harm if I mention it here, for example, acting. We can't use acting as a way of da'wah, a tamthil. Why can't we use acting as a way of da'wah? No. If it was legislated, the Prophet would have done it. If it was legislated, the Prophet would have done it. There was nothing preventing him from acting out role plays. Lakin, the fact that he did not do it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, means that it is a bid'ah and it is not legislated to do. So it is wrong what you see some people now saying we're using acting as a form of da'wah. Acting is not a form of da'wah. Acting is a newly introduced matter into the field of da'wah. Since the Prophet ﷺ did not do it, then we can't do it. Another thing, anashid. Using anashid as a way of da'wah to soften our hearts and so on, that is not something that the Prophet ﷺ did. And what proves to you that the Salaf were upon يعني, the haq when they rejected that, <coughs> is that it went from simple anashid to having boy bands. It's true. To having proper, يعني, there's no difference between the way that music is done in according to the kuffar and the way that these so-called nasheed artists do. Where they have a CD, where they have an album, and they have singles coming out, and they have what um, uh, they have a video and so on. And they go to different locations. For example, what they do in these hideous uh, places like light upon light and events that they have over in Excel. Hideous. Light upon light where there's not only Phoenix and forget about all of the other things that are haram about it. Like you've got an Ashid artist performing on stage. Performing on stage. Yeah, and can you imagine the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing an Ashid performing on stage? Billah. Or Abu Bakr or Umar or Uthman. It's haram. Because the Senef did not do it. If there was any khayr in it, the Prophet ﷺ would have done it. And there are so many harms that come about because of it. From those harms is that people turn away from the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find that they listen to th that their people's hearts, they become emotional and they, they start to maybe even, they are, uh, start to cry when they hear these anashid. But when they hear the kalam of Rabbul Alameen, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like you're talking to a brick wall. That's because they've busied the people with these anashid. Also, another form of da'wah or another form of wasila for da'wah and changing is what they use as mudaharat or protest and demonstrations. That is also haram. And if a person is using it as a way of change according to the sharia, ah, then it is a bid'ah way. Then it is a bid'ah. Ah. Why? Because the salaf did not do it. Every time you think of something, make the criteria in the Salaf al Salih. Did the Salaf do it? Yes, then I will do it. Did the Salaf not do it? No, then I will stay away from it. You say, لو كان خيرا لسبقونا إليه. لو كان خيرا لسبقونا إليه. Then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله. ولذلك يقول Sheikh الإسلام بن تيمية رحمه الله. He says في مجموع الفتاوى. 
فاما السماع سماع القاصدين اسفد السماع ذكرك سيمينيز القاصدين لصلاح القلوب في الاجتماع على ذلك اسفد اسفد ذكرك سيمينيز that these people hold in order to rectify their hearts اما نشيد مجرد it is either just نشيد that is just without any music or anything واما تصفيق او it is with نش and نشيد and clapping clapping of the hands ونحو نحو ذلك and other than that فهو السماع المحدث في الإسلام فهو السماع المحدث في الإسلام then it is a type of ceremony and remembrance that is introduced into Islam it is an innovated thing into al Islam فإنه أحدث بعد ذهاب القرون الثلاثة الذين أثنى عليهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث قال خير القرون خير القرون قرن الذي بعثت فيه ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم وقد كرهه نعم so the sheikh says رحمه الله as for those dhikr ceremonies those remembrance ceremonies that they use to close to bring their hearts to lean their hearts to make it soft whether it's with an ashid only or whether it's with musical instruments or whether it's with clapping then all of that is something which is introduced into Islam why is that lacking? if you've got the Arabic version highlight فَإِنَّهُ أُحْدِثَ بَعْدَ الذَّهَابِ الْقُرُونِ الثلاثة he says it is muhdath, it is a bid'ah. Why? Because it was introduced after the ending, after the three generations, after the three righteous generations that the Prophet praised. It was introduced after them. Obviously the Prophet ﷺ praised him. He said the best of generations are the generation that I am... I was raised with the companions, then those that came after them, and those that come after them. وَقَدْ كَرِهُ أَعْيَانُ الْأُمَّةِ and the salaf of this ummah they despised it. وَلَمْ يَحْضُرُهُ أَكَابِرُ الْمَشَايِخِ وَلَمْ يَحْضُرُهُ أَكَابِرُ الْمَشَايِخِ and the mashayikh and the imams of the past they did not enter the go into these ceremonies. So it was something that they do that was a a bid'ah, and now it's obviously developed into different things where now they do headstands and star jumps and so on and they're remembering and they're dancing around and they have different, uh, you know, different ways of doing it, where you find a group men, men, dancing around in the masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The places that are for the remembrance of Allah, the reading of the Quran of Allah jalla wa ala, and the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they've used it as a dance floor to do whatever they're doing. So look how a bid'ah started with maybe just an ashid, and now it's made grown men do star jumps in the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَقُولَ الشَّيْخِ And then the shaykh says when he was talking about this وَبِالْجُمْلَةِ فَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنَ أَنْ يَعْلَمَ أَنَّ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم لَمْ يَتْرُكْ شَيْئًا لَمْ يَتْرُكْ شَيْئًا يُقَرِّبُ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا قَدْ حَدَّثَ إلى الجنة إلا وقد حدث به ولا شيء يبعد عن النار إلا وقد حدث به وأن هذا السماع لو كان مصلحة لشرعه الله سبحانه وتعالى لرسوله the Sheikh says some very important words that can be taken as a principle he says that there is nothing upon the Muslim the believer has to know and understand that the Prophet did not leave any stone unturned he did not leave anything that could possibly bring us closer to Allah Jalla wa'ala except that he taught us the Prophet did not leave anything that can bring us closer to Allah except that he taught us and he did not leave anything that can distance us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that he mentioned that and he warned us against it. And these sorts of gatherings, if there was any goodness in them, then the Prophet sallallahu would have told us. Also Allah says, akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. This day I've completed <coughs> my, your religion for you. <laughs> I've completed your religion for you. I have completed my favor upon you and I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. طيب. Meaning the religion was complete. If the religion was complete, then there is nothing that needs to be added into the religion. Because if something is complete, then there's no room for anything to be added. That's why Imam Malik says, مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ مِنَ الدِّينِ أَنَا ذَاكَ لَمْ يَكُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ أَبَدًا أو كما قال so whatever wasn't part of the religion on that day that this verse was revealed, then it will never be part of the religion. And it brings about a lot of lawazim or it necessitates a lot of things. By you now saying, I am going to worship Allah in a way that the Prophet did not worship Allah. What does that mean? It means, mashallah, now you've revealed, you've had revelation. 
like the individual I said to you earlier on, he has a dua that the Prophet taught him directly 1,400 years later. Or he's claiming that the Prophet taught him 1,400 years later. That's why uh, some of the Salaf would say that if a person is a Sufi, they're going to stupidity. They become very foolish. How a person can believe that, um, that Prophet taught this man a dua is beyond me. But it happens. It happens. Yani they believe in that. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, وَإِذَا وُجِدَ يعني In summary, the Sheikh is saying, Rahimahullah, that even if there is some sort of benefit to them, they believe there's a benefit in it, and that their hearts become soft, and they become, mashallah, attentive, and they have humility and khushu' that won't avail them in anything. Because you can't say, I'm going to do this because my heart is, mashallah, my heart becomes, I become a righteous person every time I dance around. Like, you can't say that. You can't say that. You have to say, did the Prophet sallallahu do it? Na'am or la? Yes or no? If he did, sallallahu alayhi wa then do it. Obviously have the delil. If he did not do it, then stay away from it. طيب. Then the Sheikh says, Na'am. وَفَعَلَ هَذَا النَّقُولُ And upon that we say يَجِبَ أَن تَكُونَ وَسَائِلُ دَعْوَةِ التَّوْقِفِيَةِ And on that note it is important to say that the وَسَائِلُ دَعْوَةِ التَّوْقِفِيَةِ That the ways of da'wah are tawqifiyah Meaning we leave it to the sharia We leave it to how the Prophet وسلم, and the Salaf of Salih called to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we cannot now invent new ways Then he says Rahimahullah لَا يُشْرَعُ, لا يشرع فِيهَا إِلَّا مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then he mentions, obviously, in this he says In these words There's the, uh, a very good refutation on those There's a refutation in this qa'ida That da'wah is tawqifiya There's a refutation in those people that say That we can call to the way of Allah Using tamthil and acting Where you act like you're the prophet And I act like I'm the companion And you act like you're Abu Lahab And he acts like he's Abu Jahl why? Because it is teaching the people. So that is batil. Why? Because the Prophet wasallam did not do it. Now, So al da'wah are tawqifiya. For example, we can't say, guys, let's have different jama'at. I have a jama'ah called Sa'idiyya. You have a jama'ah called Muhammadiyya. You have a jama'ah called Hishamiyya. You have a jama'ah called Alawiyya wa kada. And each one calls to what they want. As long as they want good. And that's what happened Because all of these groups that you now hear of They started after there was no Khilafah After the fall of the Khilafah in 1924 That's when they started So they say that all of these different Jama'at They're only working in order to bring Islam together They're only working in order To make sure that Islam is the most high And that people can establish the Khilafah of Islam Like and that is incorrect Because each and every single one of them has different beliefs and each and every single one of them says that the other one is a kafir. So it's not possible. Now, that's the problem with going back to the ra'i intellect. What I believe to be correct may be different to what you believe to be correct. And what he believes to be correct and what he believes to be correct. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَغُدُوهِ لَاللَّهِ وَغَسُولٍ if you dispute and differ over something or in something, then return it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because the Quran is set, the revelation has ended, and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has ended. There's no changing of that. So every time we want to go back to the Sharia, we will always find a ruling for everything in the Sharia. So how do we rectify Tawheed? It lead, how do we rectify the Ummah? It leads us on to Al-Asl Rabi' The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, Al-Asl Rabi' The fourth Asl Al-Ihtimamu bi'aqidati salaf Giving importance to the aqidah of the Salaf al-Salih To the belief of the Salaf Ilman wa amalan wa ta'aliman Ilman by learning it Wa amalan and acting upon it Wa ta'aliman and teaching it <coughs> That is the fourth asal of this qa'idah, of, of the usul that the shaykh is mentioning. And this is exclusive also, like with all the others, to Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, or As Salafiyun, as we shall see all of the different names, 
They're the only ones that call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon correcting the aqeedah of the Muslims. Nobody else does that. Some of these jama'at, they concentrate on how they can change the ruler. Some of them concentrate on how they can kill every single person in this room. Some of them concentrate on how they can do dawah for 40 days, 3 months, 4 months, whatever it may be. And go everywhere around the world. Every single one of them concentrates on a different aspect. Lacking the only people that concentrate on Tawheed are Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Because they get their sunnah, they get their religion from the Sunnah of the Prophet. When the Prophet came to the people of Mecca, what did he do? Did he tell them, guys, stop cheating each other, stop robbing one another, stop burying your daughters? Be kind to one another, smile to each other. Did he do that? Of course not. Ya qawm, qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Oh people say la ilaha illallah, you will be successful. U'budullah ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. That's what he said to them. Worship Allah, you do not have any other gods that you should be worshipping but Allah Jalla wa ala. That's what he said to them. And they understood the message. Whether they agree or not, you have to give them that bit. They understood that La ilaha illallah meant that they could not worship their idols. That's why they rejected the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his call. <coughs> so, like he called to the Prophet sallallahu, like the Prophet called to the Tawheed of Allah, in order to rectify not only the Arabian Peninsula but humanity, then that is how we call to uh, Allah jalla wa ala. The Sheikh says, "Wa inna mimma yusafu lahu anna asbahna." So that's the first qaida. That's the asal, the, the fourth asal that we call to the Tawheed of Allah. And we learn it, we teach it, and we practice it. Is that understood? Based on that, the Sheikh says, "Wa inna mimma yusafu lahu anna nasbahna nasmahu ha fi hadhi al-awina al-akhira kalam yunabid al-aqidata wa yubghidha an sahat al-ihtimam. فمن الجماعات من يعتبر مسائل العقيدة مسائل مسائل العقيدة مسائل جزئيات لا يعتنى بها. So it is. Extreme, I say this with extreme sadness. He says that nowadays we hear in recent times. People totally disregarding and actually warning against aqidah and distancing it from the place of giving da'wah and distancing it from that which is important. And some jama'at, some jama'at, some parties and groups, we will find that they consider the issues to do with aqidah to be a side issue. That is not even important, it is a side issue. بَلْ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولْ Rather from them we find those that say مَنْ لَذِي يَطِيغُنَا إِنْ أَثْبَتْنَا لِلَّهِ يَدًا أَوْ لَمْ نُثْبِتْ They will say, Yaqi, this aqeedah that you keep busy yourself with, what difference does it make? If we say Allah has a hand, if we say Allah doesn't make, have a hand, what is the difference? يعني, what, what, how does it change our day-to-day -day lives? Will it make us any richer? Will it bring the ummah together? La wallahi. They say, will it bring the ummah together? No, it won't bring the ummah together. Therefore, leave all of these things. Allah has hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down to the lowest heaven, the third of every night. And so leave all of these things alone because they won't bring us any closer together. That's what they say. That's why when you go jama'at to tabliq, Allah, don't talk about this stuff. That's what they say to you. Don't talk about this stuff. So that's what the sheikh is saying. We've reached an extent where people are saying, what's affirm for Allah or not affirm for Allah? Even though Allah Jalla wa Ala affirms for himself, and the Prophet Sallallahu affirms for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala these attributes. So it shows the ignorance that they have of Tawheed. And it shows that they don't give importance to Tawheed. And if they did give importance to Tawheed, then they would do as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for example, Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he started his da'wah off by getting rid of all idols and shrines and tombs and destroying them. Their da'wah starts off by saying, guys, leave the clubs alone. You know, be nice to one another. Be kind. And yaqeen and iman. You know, we have to believe in Allah. Things that everyone believes in. Lakin, they did, they did not and they do not concentrate on the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they can go years, years, years without establishing anything. Nor have they got a dola, a government, nor have they rectified the aqeedah of people. 
طيب لأن الشيخ سيز رحمه الله وهذه من المصائب والطامات ومن المعلوم عند الجميع ما للعقيدة ما لعقيدة التوحيد من منزلة كبرى في الشرع and it is from the greatest calamities that someone can even say that what's the point of firming names and attributes all of this society issues leave it alone let's get to the real deal let's get to the real issues the Shia says that is from the greatest calamities because we know that the Sharia of Allah Jalla wa ala has given great importance to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he's going to mention some of the things that show the importance of Tawheed. First and foremost, فالخلق بأجمعه إنما خلق لغاية عظمة ألا وهي عبودية الله سبحانه وتعالى كما قال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون. So the first thing that the Sharia has يعني or the first importance of Tawheed that the Sharia has clarified is the fact that we were created for the worship of Allah. So how can now someone turn around and how can someone turn around now and say, Tawheed is not important. Why don't you keep going Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed? Ya akhi, we've been created for that. That is the reason for our existence. We and the jinn are here because of the Tawheed of Allah. Because we are servants of Allah Jalla wa who need to worship him. And that is Tawheed. And Tawheed is connected to Aqeedah. Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala lam yursil ghusula wa lam yunzil al-kutuba illa li ajli tahqiq al-Tawheed. And Allah did not, the second thing that shows the importance of Tawheed is that Allah did not reveal the books and send the messengers except to establish Tawheed. How many is that? Three. We were created for the Tawheed of Allah. The books were sent down because of the Tawheed of Allah. And the messengers were sent because of the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَدَّعُوتِ النَّاسِ إِلَيْهِ كَمَا قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ بِرُوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَا يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ أَنْ أَنْذِرُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُونَ So in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he sends down with these, these the, the angels the revelation that Allah Jalla wa'ala commands with that and he sends that down to whom he wants from his servants and what are they saying? that they are warning the people and calling them to La ilaha illallah. They are calling them to <coughs> the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, كما قال تعالى وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ وقال تعالى وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ So the Shaykh is saying, رحمه الله, that every messenger was sent with the call of Tawheed. If it wasn't important, why would the Prophet, why would the Prophet be sent from Rab, from Rabbul Alameen, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why would the revelation be given to Ibra, Jibreel to tell to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Why would there be jihad legislated? Why would these great ibadat be legislated if it wasn't for the importance of, tawheed of the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then the Shaykh says, وَأَوَّلُ أَمْرٍ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمُ الَّذِينِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The fourth thing that shows the importance of Tawheed is the fact that the very first command in the Qur'an, when you go start from Fatiha to Baqarah, is the verse of Allah, O you people, O people, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship your Lord, الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ That created you, وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ the one that created you and those that came before you. Is that not the Tawheed of Allah? That is the first command that is found in the Quran when you start from the Fatiha. وَأَوَّلُ مَا تَسْتَفْتِحُ بِهِ رُسُلُ دَعْوَةَ أَقْوَامِهِمْ قَوْلُهُمْ كَمَا حَكَى اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى عَنْهُمْ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهُ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهِ غَيْرُ Not only the sending of messengers, but even when these messengers are sent, the very first thing they call to is what? Oh my people, ya qawm, abudu Allah, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. You do not have any lords that you should be worshipping, any gods, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you should truly be worshipping. <coughs> not only were they sent because of that, but the very first thing they called to was that. Then he says, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, makata 23 sana, yad'u ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he spent three, 23 years calling to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Minha 13 sana fi Makkah. He spent 13 years in Makkah. Ashara sinina minha yuqarribu tawheed. In the first 10 years of the prophethood, he would be calling to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the shaykh referring to? Salah was made wajib in about the 10th year of Hijrah. That's when Isra wal Mi'raj took place roughly. But for the first 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ concentrated on establishing the Iman of the people, establishing the Tawheed of Allah in their hearts. 
The Prophet did not say, Ya Allah, I've been doing it for two years, khalas. Ya Allah, I've been doing it for five years, khalas. Ya Allah, I've been doing it for eight, nine years, ten years, twelve years, khalas. La. The Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, continued to call to the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yad'u ilayhi wa yuhagibu shirk. He would call to it and he would wage war against shirk. Wa yuhadhigu minhu and he would warn against it. Wa baqi hayatihi and the rest of his life he spent fi tathbiti aqeedati tawheedi wa tagsikhiha. He spent calling to the Tawheed of Allah, embedding it and instilling it in the hearts of the believers. Wa fi bayani al-ahkam shari'iyya and also in clarifying all of the other uh, things in the, the rulings of the Sharia. So note that the Prophet وسلم, did not stop calling to Tawheed. Even on his grave, uh, even on his deathbed, he was saying, Curse be upon the Jews and the Christians. They built masajid, they built masajid upon the graves of their prophets. Is that not the call to Tawheed? Min al ila nihayah. From the beginning of the call of the Prophet وسلم, to the end, he was calling to Tawheed. طيب. The Sheikh says كل هذا يدل دلالة واضحة على وجوب الاهتمام بأمور العقيدة تعلم وتعليم وعمل ودعوة وذلك لأن العقيدة إذا سلمت من شوائب فصاحبها من أهل الجنة لا محالة. The Sheikh says رحمه الله all of these things how many things four or five things that he has mentioned all of these things show the importance of the Tawheed of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the عقيدة giving importance to the عقيدة of the Muslim. And the aqidah is what differentiates us from the kuffar. So he says that if that tawheed, if that aqidah is free from any misguidance and defects and deficiencies, then فَصَاحِبُهَا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ لَا محالة. Then the person of tawheed will be from the people of jannah لا محالة in any case. طيب. ولو كان مرتكبا للكبائر even if he was a person that would commit major sins فإن أصحاب الكبائر إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى why because even those people that die upon major sins they're under the will of Allah سبحانه وتعالى إن شاء عذبهم ثم أدخلهم الجنة بتوحيدهم if Allah جل وعلا wills he may punish them in the fire to purify them and then enter them into Jannah due to their توحيد وقيل ذلك بفضل الله وقبل ذلك بفضل الله وكرمه وسبحانه وتعالى وإن شاء عفى عنهم أن في الله جل وعلا ويوز الله ما يفقف ذم جوت ذا توحيد فهي وأيم الله النجاة والعصمة فوالله that is success and safety that is success and safety so the sheikh is saying to us also another thing that shows you the importance of توحيد number six is that if a person dies upon the توحيد of الله He'll always end up in the Jannah of Allah, no matter what. Remember in the Tawheed class we studied Dukhulun Awali and Dukhulun Ma'ali. A Dukhul, a person may enter into Jannah immediately. Allah Jalla wa'ala may forgive him and Allah Jalla wa'ala may allow him to enter into the Jannah immediately. Or Allah Jalla wa'ala may punish him for his shortcomings and his sins and then because of that, because of his Tawheed, he comes out of the fire. So from the importance of Tawheed is that it is a reason for you to enter into Jannah. So because of all of these things, it shows the importance, uh, showing the importance of Al-Aqidah. Then the Sheikh mentions, Rahimahullah, some of the virtues of Tawheed. Some of the virtues of Tawheed, and many of you have studied it in the class of Tawheed. From that is that the person won't remain in the fire for eternity. From that is that if a person... Comes with Tawheed, then Allah Jalla wa'ala may actually forgive him in totality, even though all their shortcomings <coughs> from the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is safety and security in the dunya and guidance in the dunya. Where Allah Jalla wa'ala says, Alladina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanuhum bi zulmin, ulaika lahumul amnu wa hum muhtadun. Allah says, Those that have iman and don't mix their iman and their Tawheed with shirk, oppression meaning shirk, then for them is al amn. For them is safety and security in the dunya and the hereafter And for them is guidance in the dunya and in the hereafter So that is from the uh, benefits of Tawheed Also from the virtues and the benefits of Tawheed Is that if a person dies upon the Tawheed of Allah They will attain <coughs> they will attain the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about uh, asked uh, With regards to the Shafa'ah And he said Man qala la ilaha illallah khalisin min qalbi the Prophet said that, that 
That is the person who will get the shafa'ah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the person that says La ilaha illallah sincerely for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. طيب. Uh, نعم. Then the Sheikh says رحمه الله فالواجب على الدعات إلى على الدعات إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى and what is واجب upon those people that call to the توحيد the way of Allah سبحانه وتعالى أن يعتنوا بأمر التوحيد that they give importance to the affair of توحيد وأن يهتموا به and that they give it extreme importance وإن مما يؤلم القلب أن تنبت نابتة تقول لما هذا الاهتمام بهذا التوحيد أَلَا نَهْتَمُّ بِأُمُورِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِشْعُونِهِمْ um, It's extremely sad. He repeats something that he said before. It's sad that we find people saying, Why, what's all the importance? Of, what is it with Tawheed? What's all the importance to giving Tawheed? Some of them say, we can learn Tawheed in 10 minutes. Some of them say, some of them say, why, why don't you concentrate on the affairs of the Muslims? So sometimes we give that when you say, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will say, like in Masjid Aqsa is occupied by the Jews. I'm talking to you about the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're talking to me about Masjid al-Aqsa. Or they will say, oh Muslims, our brothers have been tortured in this place and in that place and that place. So they will say, you're not giving importance to the affairs of the Muslims. The Quran was burnt recently and you're now talking about Tawheed. We need to go to the embassy and demonstrate. That's what they will say to you. Taib. فَالْمُسْلِمُونَ يُقْتَلُونَ يَمِينًا وَالشِّمَالًا Muslims have been killed left, right, center. وَنَحْنُ نَدْعُ إِلَى هَدْمِ الْقُبَابِ so you, يعني they will say to you, you people are backwards. Muslims have been killed left, right, center. Quran has been burnt. They're making films about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And here you are telling us to destroy shrines and destroy graves. وَإِزَالَةِ الْمَسَاجِ الَّتِي بُنِيَتْ عَلَى الْقُبُورِ And you're telling us that we should destroy the mosques, get rid of the mosques that have been built upon graves. يعني you're backwards because of that. وَنَدْعُ إِلَى ذَلِكَ المسائل. وَنَدْعُ إِلَى نَحْوِ ذَلِكَ مِنَ المسائل. So they will say to you, Muslims are being killed, Muslims are going through these problems, and all you can care about is graves. What is your issue and your fetish with these graves, they will say to you. <laughs> like, there isn't an issue with us in the graves. Lacking, the issue is when the graves have been worshipped, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the problem when people don't give importance to Tawheed, they will leave all of the graves... And the shrines that are being worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And then they will say we need to rectify the ummah How can you rectify the ummah when you've left them With aqidah that is faulty Diluted with idol worshipping طيب. وقائل هذا القول نسي أو تناسل قول إمام الحنفاء إبراهيم عليه السلام And the person who says that Either forgets, has forgotten or intentionally forgets The statement of Ibrahim وجنوبني وبني أن نعبد الأصنام and al-Aslam. So he said, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and you know who Ibrahim was, the Imam of the Hunafa, the one that destroyed the idols of his hands, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that was thrown into the fire because of his aqidah. Yet he said to Allah, Oh Allah, distance me and my children, offspring, from worshipping the idols. Ibrahim himself is making dua to Allah that he frees him from. Fallen into shirk. فإذا كان خليل إمام الحنفاء الذي جعل الله أمة واحدة وقال عنه إبراهيم وإبراهيم الذي وفى وأمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتبعه. He mentions few of the virtues of Ibrahim. If he is scared of falling into shirk, then who are we? That's why Ibrahim attained one of the salaf. <coughs> he says, ومن يأمن البلاء بعد إبراهيم. Who is free from trials and tribulations and falling into shirk? Who can say I'm free from it? I won't fall into it. Who is safe from it after Ibrahim? Ibrahim himself did not think he was safe from it. ويقول الشيخ محمد عبد الوهاب رحمه الله في حديثه بسعيد الخضري قال يا موسى يا رب علمني شيء أذكرك وأدعوك به قال يا موسى قل لا إله إلا الله. He mentions the hadith that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned in which in, in which uh, Abu Sa'id al Khudri mentioned that Musa said to Allah subhanahu wa taala, Oh Allah, teach me something that I can make that I can remember you with and make dua to you through. And he said, say la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he says, and we mentioned, we took in the Masail, that even the Anbiya of Allah are in, remembrance, are in need of being reminded of the virtue of the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is a benefit that the Shaykh derived from this Masala or this Hadith. So what is the fourth Asal of Ahlul Sunnah, the Da'u Salafiyyah? The importance of calling to the aqidah, rectifying the aqidah. So someone can't say, listen, 
Muslims are being killed, and you're saying that we can't celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a bit like, well, we're only doing good and so on. Anyone that says that hasn't understood the importance of Aqeedah. Because Aqeedah is our religion. And we can only take our religion from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our religion is not based on emotions. It is not based on experiences. It is not based on trial and error. It is based upon قَالَ اللَّهُ وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ الْأَصْلُ الْخَامِسُ الْإِهْتِمَامُ بِالسُنَّةِ النَّبَوِيَّةِ وَالْحِرْسُ عَلَى الْعَمَلِ بِهَا وَالْدَعْوَةُ إِلَى ذَلِكَ He mentions three things. Giving importance to the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and being diligent in applying it وَالدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى ذَلِكَ and calling to that. Calling to what? The sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so he says, Rahimahullah, in Haqqa Ma'atana. So the asal is what? Giving importance to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, acting upon it and calling to it. He says, in Haqqa Ma'atana bihi al Muslimu al Amalu ala Qtifai Athag in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with Tajsidi Hafi Hayati, he must die in Ladalika Sabila. With Dalika in Al Gaya Teleti, yes, I lay him al Muslim, yes, I lay him al Muslimu. لأجلها إنما يسعى المسلم لأجلها إنما هي تحصيل هداية التي توصله إلى دار السعادة وقد قال تعالى وإن تضيعوا تهتدوا The Sheikh says رحمه الله The most important thing that the Muslim can give or the most befitting thing that the Muslim can give importance to is acting upon the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and making sure that he embodies that in his day-to-day -day life as much as he or she can because that is the objective of every Muslim and the target of every Muslim so that they can attain guidance that guidance that will gain that allow them to enter into the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِن تُضِعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا and if you obey him you will be guided if you obey him you will be guided وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَاتَّبِعُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ and follow him لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ so that you will be guided so if you follow the Prophet sallallahu you will be guided because Allah Jalla wa Ala says so. The opposite understanding is if you don't follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's called Mufhum Mukhalafa. The opposite understanding is if you don't follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will be misguided. Also Allah Jalla wa Ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ الْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ and Allah Jalla wa Ala says, verily in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a good role model, a good example. For the person that fears, hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day. Meaning every single believer who believes in Allah jalla wa ala, who hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believes and yearns for the last day, they should follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَهَذِهِ الْأُسْوَةُ إِنَّمَا يَسْلُكُهَا وَيُوَفَّقُ لَهَا مَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ الْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ فَإِنَّمَا مَعَهُ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ وَخَوْفِ اللَّهِ وَرَجَاءِ ثَوَابِ وَخَوْفِ عِقَابِ يَحُوثُ عَلَى تَأَسِ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَسَلَّمْ so the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, the only people that will actually implement the Sunnah of the Prophet are those people who truly have been given the tawfiq, those who hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who hope in the day of judgment, the Yawm al Qiyamah, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ones that follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam truly. They are the ones that truly follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, وَلِذَلِكَ وَلِذَا كَانَ سَلَفُ السَّابِقُونَ مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ سَابِقُونَ مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ رحمة الله عليهم يجعلون المعيار الذي يؤخذ به عن رجل العلم هو تمسكه بالسنة كما قال إبراهيم النخعي كانوا إذا أتوا الرجل ليأخذ عنه العلم نظروا إلى صلاته وإلى سنته وإلى هيبته هيئته ثم يأخذون عنه And because of that, the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, because of the importance of implementing the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the Salaf, they would give great importance to the person that they would take knowledge from. And the mi'yar or the criteria would be how he implements the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu They would look at his Salah, they would look at his Sunnah, the Sunnah that he applies, his character, and if it was in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu then they would take knowledge from him. Then they would take knowledge from him. So the Salaf, Ahlul Sunnah, another Mas'ala, they don't differentiate between the Ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you need to write that down. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, 
they do not differentiate between the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they do not say that this is mutawatir and this is ahad meaning they do not say this is mutawatir and he has come through many chains of narration so we can apply it and believe in it in aqidah but this is ahad it has only been given to us through one or two chains of narration or three chains of narration therefore for aqidah we can't apply this that's what ahlul bid'ah say those people that truly follow the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, they glorify the whole of the sunnah. Their main concern is the authenticity of the hadith. If the hadith is sahih, authentic, they act upon it. If it is not authentic, then they don't act upon it. Lakin, they don't accept it and they don't reject it based on who has narrated it. Are there many narrators or is there one narrator? And that is another difference between Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and Ahlul Bid'ah. For they will say we don't apply the hadith ahad. And I believe we studied that in the introduction of Akbi'in al Nawawi. Uh, then we call Ahlul Ulama and some of the scholars, one of the scholars said, Inna min alamati al muhibbi lillahi from the signs that a person loves Allah. Mutaba'atu Habibillah That they follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The one that Allah loves Which is the Prophet They follow him in fi akhlaqih In his In his character Wa af'alihi And his inaction In his action Wa awamirihi And his commands Wa sunnatihi And his sunnah In totality Wa hadha haqqun ma'khudun Min kitabi Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And that is derived From the verse of Allah Jalla wa ala Qul in kuntum tuhibbun allaha فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse Say if you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is called ayah to imtihan ayah to imtihan. As Hassan al-Basri said He says جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَامَ تَحُبِّهِمْ إِيَّاهُ اِتِبَاعَ سُنَّةِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَسَلَمْ There were a group of people that claimed to love the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم And then Allah جل وعلا says Verily if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَاتَّبِعُونِ then follow me if you truly love Allah Jalla wa ala, <coughs> then follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then in return as a reward, Allah will love you and forgive you. So if a person claims to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they need to make sure that they follow the what? The sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why it is sufficient for us to say, that those people that claim to celebrate that celebrate the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they don't truly love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because if they truly loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what would they do? they would follow him they wouldn't come up with newly invented matters things that were introduced after the 4th century or the 5th century that's why the poet said لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَا طَعْتَهُ if your obedience, if your love for him was sincere, then you would have obeyed him. So anyone that celebrates the birth of the Prophet وسلم, doesn't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Messenger وسلم, the correct loving. They may think they love the Prophet. وسلم, even if the Sufis cry when they say Sayyiduna Muhammadun Habibuna Kalam Fadi, it doesn't make any, it doesn't benefit them in the least. Because everyone can claim. Like in what makes my our claim, Ahlul Sunnah, what makes their claim different to the claim of the Sufiya that claims to love the Prophet? Sallallahu Action and Ittiba. Following the Sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is so easy to implement. Why is it easy? Because you say, I love the Prophet. You love the Prophet. Yes, I love the Prophet. You want to celebrate his birthday? Yes, I want to celebrate his birthday. Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, celebrate his birthday? No, then khalas. End of story. Aqeedah, the aqeedah of the Muslim is very easy, you know that. The aqeedah of the Muslim is very easy to understand. That's why it goes in accordance with our fitrah, our natural state. If the Prophet did not do it, وسلم, then don't do it. Did Abu Bakr do it? Umar, Uthman, Ali, all of the companions? No, they did not do it. The tabi'un do? La. Atba'u tabi'un, those that came after the tabi'un, did they do it? No. And what was the qa'idah that you learned earlier on? 
لو كان خيرا لسبقونا اليه if there was any good in it they would have preceded us in it but by saying you are going to celebrate the birthday of the prophet sallallahu alaihi that was introduced after the after the 400 years of the prophet sallallahu alaihi you're saying that a person came after 400 years of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's hijrah and said now i've got this muhammad missed it out that's literally what they're saying lisanu halihim that's what they're saying ya ikhwani muhammad missed this out now i've got this that muhammad missed out abu bakr and umar and uthman khalas they didn't know but allah chose me that's what they're saying and that is batil so the sheikh says rahimahullah that if their love was truthful they would follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sheikh says rahimahullah fa laqad tawatarat an nusus min kitab wa sunnati wa aqwal sahabati wa tabi'in ala targhib al amal bil hadith bi sunnati wa hatta ala tamassuk biha there are many ahadith from the, Quran, the verses from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the statements of the Sahaba which encourage us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa min ashar al-ahadith and from the most famous ahadith is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where they said wa adana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised us and it was seemed like a farewell advice or sermon and we and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said taraktum 'ala al-bayda'i laylaha kan taraktuha 'ala al-bayda'i laylaha kan nahariha la yaziqu 'anha ba'di illa halikun I have left upon you something which it's lay it's night Something clear. It's light, it's night, it's like it's day. And no one will be misguided except a person who is destroyed. And whomsoever lives long. So this is an advice from the Prophet. So let's say now, there's a lot of differing in the Ummah, right? Imagine you're hearing the words of the Prophet. Because when you hear a hadith and it is authentic, what does that mean? The words of the Prophet. So imagine you can hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because these are his words. So he says to you, yeah, he says to you, I have left something that is clear. And you will see much differing. And whoever sees a lot of differing, what should I do, Ya Rasulullah? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ Upon you is my sunnah. وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ رَاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي And the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali رضي الله عنهم أجمعين عضوا عليها بالنواجد Hold on to it with your molar teeth That's literally the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم So where he says عليكم يعني hold on to the عليكم بالسنة meaning hold on to my path And what is the path of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم That which is found in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Whether it's an ibadah Whether it's a belief Whether it's his character Wherever it may be you act upon it because it is because it is found in the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Prophet already said to you, follow my Sunnah. So by you doing something that he did not do, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're saying, Ya Rasulullah, your Sunnah is good, but my Sunnah is also good. Okay. Then the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, or he mentioned some of the statements of the Salaf, Rahimahullah, Rahimahullah. <coughs> Uwa bin Zubayr, where he says, As-sunan, as-sunan. Fa-inna as-sunan qiwamu al-deen. Hold on to the sunnah. Hold on to the sunnah. For verily the foundation of the deen is the sunnah. Ay ilzamu sunan. Hold on to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu, he would follow the Prophet of sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would do everything that he did. Everything that he did, even where he prayed in, even when he was on a journey, he would do exactly the same. Tayyip. Also from the statements of the Salaf is the statement of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah where he said Ajma' al-Muslimuna the Muslims have consensus upon the fact that ala anna man stabanat lahu sunnatun min sunnati Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or sunnatu an Rasulillah whoever clearly knows of a sunnah from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yahilla lahu an yada'aha li qawli ahadin it is not permissible for him to leave it for the statement of anyone that is Imam al-Shafi'i telling us that all of the Ummah were upon this. That's why these great Imams, every one of them would say, إِذَا صَحَّ الْحَدِيثُ فَهُوَ مَذْهَبِي If the hadith is authentic, then that is my madhab. They would say, if my hadith, if my statement, my opinion goes against the hadith, throw my one against the wall. Why? Because they knew that the sunnah was above everything else and everyone else. Compare that to people today. You say to them, the Prophet said, they say, yeah, but Sheikh Fulan said, Imam Fulan said, or look what the people are doing. You're telling them, Qala Allah, and they're saying, look what the people are doing. If the celebrating of the Mawlid was haram, then the whole Ummah wouldn't be doing it. It's just you Wahhabiyah that have an issue against it. 
So they will say to you. طيب. Then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله. Oh, from that, نعم. طيب. Another story. Imam Malik, رحمه الله. Just to show the, how the Salaf gave importance to the Sunnah. Imam Malik, رحمه الله, used to teach in the Prophet's Masjid, صلى الله عليه وسلم. رحمه الله. A man came to him and he said, where shall I put my ihram on? When he started Umrah, where shall I put my ihram on? And you all know that the miqat, the place that the hujjaj or those that are performing Umrah, the place that they go to is called the Hulayfa for the people of Medina. That's their point of starting ihram. So Imam said to him, go there, the Hulayfa. And he said, like, I want to do it from the qabr of the Prophet sallallahu the grave of the Prophet, the Prophet's there, it's a noble masjid, and so on and so forth. And he said, Akhsha alayk al fitna. I fear that you will fall into a fitna. The man said, What are you talking about? What fitna? It's only a few miles from the Halifa to the Prophet's masjid, it's a few miles. In the Mahiya Amyalu Nazidullah, there's only a few miles that I increase. And then he says, I fear the fitna that Allah Jalla wa'ala said about. فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Where's the mahalu shahid? فَلْيَحْذَرِ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ Let those who oppose the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ oppose his command, let them be warned that a great punishment or great fitna may come to them. And what fitna is greater than thinking that you have a guidance that missed the Prophet ﷺ? The sunnah is so easy. Ya yeah, the Prophet said, do, do, go to the Halifa to do your haram. Khalas, just do it. If he was alive, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was alive, would you say to him, Ya Rasulullah, that's nice, but let me just do it over here. Of course you wouldn't. And that's the difference between us. <laughs> that's the difference between us and the companions. The companions would never, ever reply back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the extent that if the Prophet asked them a question, even if they knew what it was, they would say, Allahu A'lam. Allahu Rasulullah A'lam. He would say, what day is it today? If I said to you, what day is it today? You say, it's a Sunday, isn't it? Like in, when they would say that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would say, Allahu A'lam. To the extent that sometimes they wouldn't correct him in Salah for fear. They would say, Allahu A'lam. Why? That is why the companions are the companions. They followed the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the teeth. Taib. <coughs> also, the great Imam of the Tabi'een, Sa'id ibn Musayyib, rahimahullah ta'ala, he saw a man praying after Fajr, or after Asr, one of the two, the prohibited times. And he said to him, don't pray there, don't pray. He prohibited him from doing so. And the man said, is Allah going to punish me for a salah that I'm doing? It's only salah. Yani, alan, mathlan, we prayed asr, sah? If one of us says, MashaAllah, I've got energy, I'm going to pray two rak'at, we say to him, don't pray rak'at. Sit down, listen to the lesson. And he says, yeah, but I've studied this book ten times, let me just pray two rak'at. We say to him, let's study, sit down. He's going to say, what? It's only two rak'at. Is Allah going to punish me? For, why are you preventing me from salah? He said that to Sayyid Musayyid so and he said, La, Allah is not going to punish me, punish you for your salah. Walak you adhibuka li mukhalafati sunnah. He's going to punish you for opposing the sunnah of the Prophet, going against the sunnah of the Prophet. So they can't say, We're only saying we love the Prophet and we're reading out nice poetry, we're praising him. La. That's not the issue here. Do what you want to do, praise him how you want to praise him. The issue is the fact that he did not do this. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi Taib Then the Shaykh says Imam Kana man mada min ulamaina Yaqul ala i'tisamu bi sunnati najah Those that preceded us Imam Zuhri was from the tabi'een Meaning the sahaba and so on They would say to him Or they would say <coughs> That holding on to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was safety Now it was najah That was safety and then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, mentions a few important, a few benefits from holding on to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Sunnah and the fact that it would bring a person closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then the Sheikh says towards the end, وَكَانَ السَّلَفُ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ يُشَدِّدُونَ فِي تَنْكِ بَعْدِ السُنَنْ The Salaf, they would be harsh towards the people that would lead, leave some of the Sunnah, some of the acts that are Sunnah. 
أو يلومون تاريكها مطلقا They would blame those people that would leave the sunnah, the prophet in totality لأنه قد يتناوله عموم قوله تعالى فمن رقب عن سنتي فليس مني So they would blame those people that would leave the prophet or the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and say to them you have you come under the command of the prophet or the word of the prophet whoever leaves off my sunnah then he is not from me Meaning if even if a person that's why فلذلك قال إمام أحمد رحمه الله إمام أحمد said من ترك الوتر فهو رجل الصوء whoever leaves off the wittig he's, he's an evil wicked person لا ينبغي أن تقبل له الشهادة The witness the testimony of that person is not to be accepted Sahih is true Nowadays that might be different These are from the ahkam The rulings that vary From time to time So during their time The one that did not pray witig Was considered a fasiq Because the, the minimum would be That they would pray probably 20 rak'at at night That was probably the minimum If you pray 20 rak'at They would consider you well, He's alright He's not bad طيب. So that's why witig Was such a big deal to them and to the extent that they would say, if a person doesn't pray witig, then he can't even be a witness in a court of law. Because he's not trustworthy. He's, all cl- he's close to being a fasiq to them. Someone who's disobedient. Like to us, the one that doesn't pray witig is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. Witig is one of those things. So it changes from time to time. Like in the intent is, or the objective of mentioning this, the Shaykh is mentioning is, how the Salaf gave great importance to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So never say it's only a Sunnah Like you do it because it's a Sunnah The Sahaba, they would do things because it is a Sunnah We leave things off because it is a Sunnah Two different sides of the spectrum For كُلُّ مَا ثَبَتَ مِنْ سُنَّةِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Everything that is affirmed from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam نَسْعَى سَعْيًا شَدِيدًا لِتَطْبِيقِهِ وَتَعْلِيمِهِ لِلنَّاسِ we strive we strive uh, in implementing it and in teaching it to the people la'allahu subhanahu wa ta'ala yahabana ajra man ahya sunan it may be that allah jalla wa ala gives us the reward of who those who revive the sunan al asl sadis the sixth principle or the sixth foundation of da'wah salafi al iktibat al wathiq al iktibat al wathiq bi ulama al sunna holding on to and connecting yourselves and ourselves and having that connection with the scholars of the Sunnah. With the scholars of the Sunnah. <coughs> Why the scholars of the Sunnah? Because the Prophet said, Al ulama waratatul anbiya. The scholars are the inhabitants of the Prophet. Also, Allah says, Yagfa'illahu ladina amunu minkum wa ladina utul ilma darajat. Allah elevates those people that have knowledge in ranks. Also Allah says فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. All of these statements show the importance of following the sunnah, the, following the scholars and connecting ourselves to them. Ibn Mas'ud said رضي الله عنه مَنْ كَانَ مُسْتَنًّا فَلْيَسْتَنَّ بِمَنْ قَدْ مَاتْ فَإِنَّ الْحَيَّ لَا تُؤْمَنْ عَلَيْهِ الْفِتْنَةِ Whomsoever has passed, whomsoever wants to take as a guidance, let him take as a guidance those who have passed away. For verily the one that is alive, you do not know he may fall into fitna. Like in the people that are the, clo- the furthest away from fitna and falling into fitna are the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Not the scholars of Ahlul Bid'ah. Because the scholars of Ahlul Bid'ah, they fluctuate like the windmill. One minute they're on this aqidah, next minute they're on this aqidah, and next minute they're on that aqidah. Like in, if you look into the ulama of the sunnah that are known, that are famous, that are yani, known to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu If you go back to even when they were young, and you go back to the aqidah back then, and you go to the aqidah now, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. It doesn't change. If you look at the books that they offered, and the lectures that they delivered when they were young, <coughs> They're saying exactly the same thing when they are in their 80s and in their 90s. Why? Because the religion doesn't change. Why should they change? The religion doesn't change. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah. And also, for regards to the benefits of the scholars, Allah, the Prophet said, The Prophet said that. Through every generation, the just ones, 
the udul, the just ones, are the ones that are carrying on the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, the knowledge. They've removed the distortion of those people that distort the interpret the Quran or the, or, or the Sunnah. And those that lie and those that interpret the meanings of the Prophet wasallam's hadith and the verses of Allah in an incorrect way. They remove all of that distortion and they protect the Hurasu Sharia as the Sheikh shall say. And note that Yahmilu, the scholars say, is a fi'l mudari. Hamala, yani he carried. يحمل, what does it mean? فعل مضارع carries on meaning it will carry on it will carry on until يوم القيامة the sheikh says لا يخفى على أحد فضل العلماء the virtue of scholars, the scholars are, is not hidden from anyone والمكانة التي, والمكانة التي يتبوؤونها في الشريعة الإسلامية and the status that they have in the الشريعة ولكن بعض الناس يخرد بين الحث على الاكتباد بالعلماء وبين التعصب لهم والتقليدهم وهذا خطأ كبير this is another important message that the sheikh says رحمه الله طيب he says it is extremely important obviously everyone knows the importance of having scholars and connecting ourselves to the scholars. Lakin some people mix up two things. F- connecting ourselves to them and following their advice and so on and blind following them. Uh, blind following them and having ta'asub or hooliganism to them. Being a fanatic supporter of them even if they might be in the wrong, even if they might have made a mistake. And blind following them. And that is a big mistake. That is a big mistake, the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah. And there's a difference, as the Sheikh says. The Alim, we follow him. We make dua for him. We take his advice. And we connect ourselves to him. We ask him for fatawa and so on and so forth. Lakin, we're connecting ourselves to the knowledge that he carries and not to his personality. We're connecting ourselves to that Shaykh. We're not we're connecting ourselves to the knowledge that he's carrying, not to the personality that he has. Because what is the, the the important thing is the, the knowledge that he is carrying. That is the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that shows us how it is wrong to turn da'wah and knowledge into a celebrity culture. Whereby people don't actually care what you're teaching Or the lecture that you're giving Or the reminder They will just say Sheikh Fulan is coming Khalas, As if that's the end of you Sheikh Fulan is coming You have to come because he's coming Sometimes the titles are not even written Like and that is incorrect Connect the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And that's the guidance of the scholars there was a night the Sheikh Fawzan Hafidahullah he came to the university and he was in credit to Sharia delivering a lecture. He didn't want to do it. They forced him to do it. It was about his biography. And you can tell the Sheikh was so uncomfortable. He didn't want to talk about himself. And even the things that questions that they were asking him, he would always connect it to a fa'id of ilm. To the extent that they asked him. Did you get married before when you was in the kulliya or after the kulliya or the ma'ad? He didn't say, yeah, well, I before the ma'ad and I went this and then my walima was here and this and that. He said, what's the connection between knowledge and marriage? <laughs> That's what he said. What is the connection? <coughs> so the alim, the scholar, the student of knowledge, you as a da'i, as a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't connect the people to your personality. Because you're going to die خلاص. You're going to tamshi You're going to go Like in what remains Is the knowledge that you taught them And that is what leads to What the sheikh is saying Ta'assub Blind following And holding on Taqlid Saying that uh, If my sheikh said it Then it's the haq Never can my sheikh be wrong How can he be wrong He's studied X amount of years Like in that's from the diseases Of These deviant sects That's where it came into the that's where it came into this ummah Through the deviant sects Whereas Ahlu Sunnah From the time of the Prophet وسلم, Up until now They connect the people to Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul wa Qala Salafu Salih Khalas There's no need to connect yourself to the people Also if a alim from the Sunnah makes a mistake We don't have ta'asub to him We don't say la He's the fanatism Ta'asub 
and say, La, he can't be in the wrong, La. Or you have to follow the Sheikh. This is another phenomenon that we're going through where people are being forced to follow a specific Sheikh. Not even what he's upon. Like in, the Sheikh said that, خلاص, you can't go against. And I wouldn't mind if it was in the ranks of the Ikhwan Muslimin and that. Like in, coming into the ranks of the Salafis, that literally contradicts a Salafiyyah. al in the, according to the Sunnah, is قَالَ لَوْ قَالَ رَسُولُ قَالَ السَّلَفِ Not قَالَ الشَّيْخِ The Sufi are those that have يعني, تعصب to that Sheikh where you can't go against him. If he tells you to do sujood 500 times, you do sujood 500 times. خلاص, you can't go against him. Like, it's sad to see that according to the Salafis, whereby anyone that goes against their Sheikh is of the methodology. And you will find, and those brothers that have been in a da'wah uh, for the last 20, 30 years, they will testify that the amount of scholars that have been dropped just because they didn't say a certain word are many. It can go into 50 plus scholars. Not because they're mubtadi'ah, simply because they refuse to say a certain statement. If you didn't say what Sheikh Fulan said, then you are mubtadi'ah. If you didn't say, then we have to warn from you. Is he a mubtadi'ah? No, but he's just not with the scholars. When in reality, the scholars means one or two or three. So that is deceit. Like, in how can you be saved from that as a young person? Knowledge. Because that is ighab fikri. That is ideological terrorism. Al-ulama qala kada. The scholars said that. So scholars, is, you'd think about 500 of them said it. But in reality, it's two or three. That he has ta'asub for. Like, in the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, they're to be respected, they're to be loved, they're to be defended. Like, in they themselves don't want to be blind followers. And the only way you can get out of that is if you seek knowledge. Because when you will learn how to defend yourself from falling into these fitan. Then the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, فَلَيْكْ تَبَادُ بِالْعُلُمَاءِ يَعْنِ أَخْذِ الْعِلْمِ عَنْهُمْ وَالْإِسْتِفَادَةَ مِنْهُمْ وَالْتَوْجِيهِ وَالْإِكْشَادِ وَالنَّحْوِ ذَلِكَ كَمَا أَنَّهُ يَعْنِي كَمَا أَنَّهُ يَعْنِي تَقْلِيدَهُ مِمَّنْ يَسُوغُ لَهُ تَقْلِيد نعم. Then the Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, so the scholars, what it means to follow the scholars and to connect yourself to them is take knowledge from them and to benefit from them and to, their, to benefit from their guidance and their advice. And even for the one that is allowed to blind follow them because of him being ignorant, then for him it is permissible to blind follow. For example, a person doesn't know, zakah, مثلا, do women have to pay zakah on their gold? The Ami says, I don't know. I have no idea. This hadith, sahih, da'if, that you keep saying, Muslim, kafir, narrated, I don't know. Because the awam, some of them don't know. There's a story where someone said, someone, uh, Ami, he kept on hearing, Rawahu Muslim, narrated by Muslim, narrated by Muslim. In the end, he said, listen, you keep saying Muslim. Is there a hadith narrated by a kafir? Because <laughs> yeah. he thought the opposite to Muslim is what kafir. He didn't know imam, Muslim is an imam. طيب. So the awam is permissible for them to follow. طيب. <coughs> then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, the importance of, he mentions in the statement of Imam Sa'ud, Rahimahullah, which talks about the importance of following the methodology that these great scholars have followed, which is based on the Quran and the Sunnah. And he says, for example, Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah, and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, and Imam uh, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, all of these great Imams were Imams of the Sunnah. They commanded the people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They did not have any, they did not connect the people to their personalities. They did not have this celebrity culture whereby the haqq is with them. No. They would connect the people to qala Allah wa qala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you think about all of these great imams, Imam Ahmed was around during the time where they said the Quran was makhluq. He was probably one of the only imams, like with about another handful of scholars, that said, La, the Quran is the word of Allah. It is not created. And he was punished. Some imams were killed because of that. And he was firm, rahimahullah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, came at a time where everything that could go wrong went wrong. The Ash'ira and every other deviant sect was around, the Kuffar were around, the Rawafidah, everybody. And then Allah chose him and he refuted every single one of them. He beat them at their own game to the extent that this, till this day, PhD uh, thesis and master's thesis are being written about Sheikh al-Islam and his efforts and how he refuted this, how he refuted that. There is not a science, Allahu A'lam, but it, in the majority of sciences of Islam, Sheikh al-Islam has work in it, has authored in it. So Allah Jalla wa'ala chose him. Then came the door of the time of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab. 
He came at a time when people were grave worshipping, idol worshipping. Women that want to get babies would go to a grave and sit at a grave. Sit on top of a grave thinking that the barakah of the sheikh inside the grave will reach them and somehow go through their veins and then inshallah she'll be pregnant. And then he came and he wiped all of that away. And he said, And the benefits of the da'wah, Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, here we are, alhamdulillah, in the ni'mah of that da'wah. Because it connected us to where? al amr al-awwal, al amr al-atiq, the very first affair, which was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, it's important to know when it comes to the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, we have to take knowledge from the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. We cannot take scholars from Mubt- knowledge from Mubtadi'ah. Because if you take knowledge from, as we shall see in a minute, Lakin, when you take knowledge from a deviant, isn't that deviant going to come to you? That deviancy that he has in his heart, will it not come into your heart? Of course it will. And uh, inshallah, we shall see some of the statements of the Salaf regarding that. Taib. الأصل السابع الابتعاد عن الحزبيات والجماعات الإسلامية السرية. The Sheikh says رحمه الله the ninth or the seventh أصل and the foundation of this of the دعوة السلفية is that we stay away from all types of groups and parties whether they're hidden or apparent. We stay away from every newly invented group. And the opposite to that is, what do we do? We hold on to the jama'ah of the Muslims and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sheikh says, rahimahullah. <coughs> the Sheikh says, نحن نشاهد ونرى جماعات تنشق عن جماعة المسلمين الشرعية تنشق عنها بما لديها من أفكار وأنظمة وكل هذه الجماعات تجتمع على هدف واحد وهو كراهة المجتمع المسلم الشرعي The Sheikh says we see so many jama'at so many groups breaking off from the main body of the jama'at of the Muslims and all of these jama'at have their own ideologies and own sets of rules and beliefs and they all have the same target which is that they say that the mujtama' or in majority of them the majority of them they say that the Muslim the mujtama' of the Muslims are kuffar like the Ikhwan Muslimin, when their leaders came, some of the people that they would go back to, the books that they authored, they said that the mosques are temples. The mosques of the Muslims are temples today because the whole of the Basharia, the whole of mankind has turned away from Islam. Whereas they're the only people that are holding the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Taib. نعم حتى يكون حك... نعم لا نعم. لأن الشيخ سيد رحمه الله ومن هذه الجماعات أم from these جماعات جماعة الإخوان المسلمين وجماعة التبليغ وحزب التحرير. so he mentions three groups that were around and that are still around إخوان المسلمين the جماعة التبليغ and the حزب التحرير. so these جماعات are groups that the young that that the Muslim should avoid because they are not upon the methodology of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. <coughs> and the biggest evidence that they're not upon the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Is the fact that we can pinpoint when it started It is a da'wah, a call That we can pinpoint the starting point Muhammad Ilyas Kandahlawi had a dream And he said, I have a dream No, he literally said, I have a dream <laughs> <laughs> huh? He based it on a dream The usul, the foundations that he has He based it on the dream that he had Okay, and then they come up with six foundations, and this is what they call the people truth. And you will find in that jama'ah they don't give importance to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, you won't find them warning against a shirk, hence, you won't find them warning against al bid'ah. And the jama'ah to the Muslimin, they're a jama'ah that started about 100 years ago, and their main goal when it started was to come into government. To sit on that chair One of them sits on the chair <coughs> That's all it was Pay attention here That's their aim. That was their aim Whereas the da'wah of The Salafi The Sunni That is upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam His first and last goal is what? To connect the people to the Tawheed of Allah That they become righteous Muslims It doesn't matter if he's not the leader It doesn't matter if his cousin or his brother is not the leader He doesn't mind or his tribe are not the leaders. It doesn't concern him. His main goal is that the people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that they do not worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that they follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
But also, Ikhwan, it can be said, why talk about these jama'at and why talk about them? Why not leave them alone? Leave the Ikhwan Muslimin alone, the jama'at tabliq alone. That is something that a lot of people are pushing today. And that is the whole reason why these, why the summer Dawah in this masjid is based on the aqeedah and the manhaj of the Salaf al-Salih. Because yes, there are those that claim to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they say, leave Jama'at al-Khwan Muslimin alone. It's political based. You're only talking about it because your Saudi rulers talk about it. They'll say that to you. And it's sad. If it was Ikhwan al-Muslimin saying this, I wouldn't mind. But when you find people in your ranks saying that, that's when you need to realize that the Shabab are in danger. Now we can leave you and say to you, go to Ikhwan Muslimin. But what are you going to do tomorrow when they tell you to go to the battlefields in Syria? When they tell you that your mother is a kafir? When they tell you your mother, your brothers and your family members are all kuffar? And when they tell you to go and join, join ISIS and al-Shabaab or Boko Haram? Because that is their belief. When they tell you that all of the kuffar are mushrikun, all of the leaders are mushrikun, the Muslims are mushrikun. Not only that, but anyone that works in their government buildings is a kafir. Therefore, it's permissible for us to kill the police officer that's walking the streets. The parking attendant is working for the government so we can kill him. So do you understand that if we leave, these, if we leave you to these jama'at, and we say, we leave these jama'at alone, it's you that's going to fall prey to it. And this wasn't known among the Salafis 25 years ago. Ask Sheikh Ali later on. The young Salafi... Even if he had no knowledge, he knew who the people of the Sunnah were. And he knew who the people of Bid'ah were. But the problem is now, they want Ahl Sunnah to be quiet, and they won't allow Ahl Bid'ah to be quiet. They won't let Ahl Bid'ah, or they won't tell Ahl Bid'ah to be quiet. Right. We be quiet and we leave our Shabab to get lost in the middle of nowhere. Right. If we leave you to Jama'at Tabliq tomorrow, you'll be in Blackburn. Next day you'll be in Belgium And then the day after you'll be in Brazil Saying that you're giving da'wah When you haven't actually studied in, Well obviously Alhamdulillah you guys always, always study Lacking How many other young people Who now come in from the streets And as soon as they come into the street uh, Come into the masjid They're like yalla get your bags Where are we going? Going to Denmark For what? We're going to give da'wah Is that the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So for the for Ahl Sunnah to be quiet today it is haram for them. And they will be asked about it Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So do not think why, why Ustads and why are these people always talking about these jama'at. Today it's become a taboo lakin. It's unfortunate we have let you guys down. That's the reality. We have let you guys down. That is why many of you may think, yeah, well, it's true, leave Muslims alone, leave them, hunky dory, get along happy. It's the du'a that have let you down. When we, Alhamdulillah, 20 odd years ago, Alhamdulillah, our mashayikh, when they were coming to the UK, they would teach the people the haqq. They would teach them who to study under and who to not study under. So the young man would grow up knowing who Albani was, who Ibn Uthaymi was, who Ibn Baz was, who Fawzan was, who Abad was, and who these great imams were. Not because of who they were, but because of what they carried. Like in nowadays, because everybody's thinking about followers and I'm going to lose my uh, number of follow X amount of number of followers if I start to talk about these affairs and if I retweet this, then they're going to think, oh, you're, you're one of those extreme selfies. They're going to think that. Because of that, everyone's like, nafsi, nafsi. I just want my institute or my masjid to be safe from all of the fitting. Well, what fitting? Yeah? And tell the shabab to stay away from the fitting. Tell the shabab to stay away from the fitan, learn the knowledge of learn the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. Khalas, they'll be safe. They'll be safe. طيب. So the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah. Walil Asafi, Aqul Walil Asafi, Yujadu Manjala Salafiyata, Hizban Kahadihil Ahzab. And he says, and I say this with being extremely sad, like in there are those that have made Salafiyya Hizban a group just like all of the other Ahzab. وَيُوجَدُ مَنْ يَسْعَى إِلَى جَعْلِ السَّلَفِيَّةِ كَهَذِهِ الْأَحْزَابِ There are those that have made Salafiyya like one of these parties. <coughs> فَنَحْنُ نَبْرَى إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنْ هَذَا الصَّنِيعِ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَرِّ هَذَا الْفَاعِلِ So then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله, 
that there are those that try to make Salafiyya a party. You probably heard in Misig they said Jama'at al-Salafiyya when they came into government when they or when they try to have a political party. And all across the globe we find this. Where they may not say, Ya Jama'at al-Khayyik, this is a Jama'at and this is the leader and so on. Lakin, they say that this is our Shaykh, whoever follows him is a Salafi. And whoever doesn't follow him is not a Salafi. And then a mistake happens or two scholars argue over a mas'ala in one part of the world. And then they will come to you, Masakin Shabab, and say, listen, give me your bayan. What's your, what's your stance? Who are you with? I don't know. Like, you have to be with someone. Look, all of the evidences are proven. Look, the evidences are here. I don't know. Let me just know. Like, you have to be with a person. This is our bayan. We'll give you a few days to think about it. And if you don't follow this, and if you don't come to us, wallahi, you're not a mukhlis. You're not sincere. It happens. You may be laughing, like in, it's the reality that I'm talking about. If you're not with our sheikh, or if you're not with us, then, then you're not a mukhlis. Then you're not a salafi. And why is this a fitna? Imagine what a, a khilaf that happens in the other side of the world. Between two ulama from the sunnah. What has it got to do with you? Where do you come into it? You don't come into it. That's the answer. That khilaf between ahl al-ilm stays between the ahl al-ilm. Like to now expose it to the shabab and to now start groups and parties based on that, that is haram, an alf haram. For example, let's say now, مثلاً, I come to you, I say, Fawzan has, Sheikh Fawzan refuted Sheikh Fulan. What's your stance? You say, Tayyip, I'm with Sheikh Fawzan. Sometime later, another alim makes a mistake and Sheikh Fawzan, Hafidahullah, refutes him. And I say, la, la, now it's a different Sheikh. What's your stance? You say, Tayyip, I'm with Fawzan again. But the problem is when you say, la, this Sheikh, I love him, but Fawzan, you know, might have made a mistake. They say, khalas. And then we break off. To the extent that you find now, maybe what? Let's say there's about 60 of us in the room. If we carry on with that methodology, 10 are going to break off. Another 20 are going to break off in the year after that. A year later, another 30 are going to break off. Then there's going to be these three brothers in the front left. Is that what Islam calls to? Is that what the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam calls to? No. And whenever the scholars warn against that, they're not listened to. Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan is from the people that warn against that all the time. In so many classes, in so many lessons and lectures that he'd be given, he'd be asked about these people that cause these sorts of fitting. Say, how will I listen with Talbot? They're not even students of knowledge. You will find people busying themselves with Qala Fulan, he said this, he said that. What's your stance on this? What's your stance on that? When in reality, they're meant to be memorizing the Qutab of Allah, understanding the hadith of the Prophet, memorizing the hadith of the Prophet. Lacking, they busy themselves with fitna. And then years later, you find that you ask them a simple question to do with fiqh, and they stutter. Whereas if they would have studied and taken the advice of the scholars, they wouldn't have stuttered. So that is who the Shaykh is referring to, rahimahullah. Look how, yani, the insight that Shaykh Abdul Salam had. It happens today, but he said it way 20 years ago. Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatullahi wa sa'a. The Shaykh says, يقول الشيخ الإسلام الشيخ الإسلام سيس فأما الانقسام الذي يفارق بين المسلمين فيه خروج عن جماعة الانتلاف إلى الفرقة والسلوك الضريق الابتداع ومفارقة السنة والابتباع فهذا مما ينهى عنه ويأتم فاعله ويخرج بذلك عن طاعة الله الشيخ الإسلام سيس رحمه الله As for the differing that divides the Muslims شوف As for the differing that divides the Muslims وفيه and in it there's خروج عن جماعة المسلمين you're leaving them from the main body of the Muslims واتلاف القلوب and the hearts coming together you're going against that والسلوك دريق الابتداع and you're inventing into the طريق of the شريعة something which is not from it ومفارقة السنة والاتباع and leaving the Sunnah or following the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فهذا مما ينهى عنه that is from that which you that we prohibit against, or that it should be prohibited against. وَيَأْثَمُ فَاعِلُهُ And the one that does it is sinning. وَيَخْرُجُ بِذَلِكَ And because of that, he leaves the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So sahih, there are those that make 
Salafia to be a Hizb. Lakin, ikhwani, pay attention here. Does that mean we leave Salafia? No. It doesn't mean we leave Salafia. Because there are those that misuse a Salafia and say we are Salafis and no one else is a Salafi, it doesn't mean that we're saying, خلاص, then we're going to leave Salafia. Salafia is extreme. It's not. In the, when you, in the media outlets, all media outlets, what are Muslims labeled? Terrorists. What are we going to say? خلاص, Muslims are terrorists. We're going to leave Muslims. We're going to leave Islam. Is that correct to say? Of course not. Salafia is yours. All you have to do to act upon Salafia is say, قال 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 salaf. Believe in what they believed in, خلاص, you're a Salafi. You don't have to go to a certain sheikh. You don't have to take a certain stance. You don't have to give a bayan. You don't have to go to a certain makas or a certain city or anything like that. Even the old woman living in the Bedouin with her sheep, she's a Salafiyah. As long as she's upon the Quran and the Sunnah, upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. Even though she may not know it in detail. Like in her fitra is Salim. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah. <coughs> Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala sammana fi kitabihi al-Muslimin. Wa sabu sammakum muslimin. Wa thabata fi muslim li Ahmed. And Imam Ahmed said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man da'a da'u al-jahiliyyah to whoever calls with the slogans of jahiliyyah. فهو جثاء جهنم. Then he is from the people of Jahannam. قال رجل يا رسول الله يا رسول الله وإن صام وصلى. What if he prays and he uh, fast? نعم وإن صام وصلى. ولكن تسموا بسم الله الذي سماكم عباد الله المسلمين المؤمنين. <coughs> so that is who we are. We're Muslims. طيب. So then someone can say, so why are you saying Salafi Salafi? Sunni Sunni. أهل الأثر أهل الحديث. فرقة الناجي. Where do this come from? The Sheikh says وهذه تسمية كانت yeah. Uh, we're going to have a 15 minute break inshallah 7.29 15 minute break That's enough in a 15 minute break 15 minute break And then we'll resume inshallah for the last session We haven't got long left We've only got number 8, 9 and 10 Allah Ta'ala A'lam wa